Hello, everybody. Parallel here, and welcome to Star Trek Online. Oh man, you know what you're looking at. That's right, it is the Tier 6 Scimitar. It's what we've been waiting for, everyone. The Tier 6 flagship uh, bundle has finally been released by Cryptic. It just came out today. And I picked up the Mega Bundle, which is all nine ships, three ships of each faction. So I wanted to do a video on this. I am super excited. These ships are amazing. Almost every single ship looks fantastic. Cryptic really outdid themselves in the visual department this time. And I also just wanted to quickly show everyone basically the visuals, uh, go through and show kind of the features of each ship, maybe the layout, the masteries, take a look at the console, uh, and actually take a look at what the numbers are on the console and the uh, starship traits. And then, you know, just take a look at it in the ship tailor and see all the different variations that are available. And, and finally, I do also want to check out the Admiralty cards so everyone gets an idea of what those look like. Uh, this isn't going to be like a detailed build video. I do want to just kind of give a brief overview of each ship more than go into details. I will be doing, of course, full detailed builds of all of these ships coming later. All right, so let's get started. So first thing, let's just hover around and take a look at the new scimitar it really looks great they it looks like a you know upgraded scimitar in every aspect it's got kind of a more sleek look for sure the wings are more slanted and forward swept a lot more curves very 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 nice design and one thing i really like about this let me like saw right here the impulse engine looks fantastic very, very cool looking impulse engine. Very, very nice looking ship. Yeah, just really great. I mean, what can I say about it? It just is... I mean, it, it's true to the form of the scimitar, but it does have you know, a much more futuristic, streamlined look to it. It really is pretty much what you'd expect from a Tier Six Scimitar in the visual department. Okay, so let's take a look at this ship and the layout first. Um, let's start out here. Yeah, let's just take a look at the ship overall. It is does carry over the same five forward weapon, three aft weapon layout as the Scimitar and has the same console layout. So it's got the three engineering, three science, five tactical. Still got a hangar bay. So very, very similar to the original scimitar as far as the uh, actual layout of the consoles and weapons. Let's take a look at the masteries here. So it comes with uh, precise weapon systems, 5% accuracy, You've got your enhanced singularity circuitry. This is increases your singularity charge rate and uh, reduced cooldown. You've got your enhanced weapon system, so plus 10% kinetic and all energy damage. Devastating weaponry, so you got your 2.5% crit chance. And here is the starship trait. So once you get to tier five, you will unlock supercharged weapons. Now, a lot of people had question marks about this one because it actually sounds pretty interesting but uh, no one actually really had the numbers. So looking at it here right now, it looks like the numbers are as follows. So it gives, basically whenever you fire a torpedo, you get a stack of this buff, supercharged buff, stack three times, and directed energy weapons gain 10% uh, damage for 20 seconds, 1.5% crit chance for 20 seconds, and 6.6 .6 crit severity. That is really really good I mean if you stack that up three times you stacked it up three times you're looking at a 4.5 percent more crit chance and uh, yeah three times like 18 uh, almost 19 20 percent crit severity <laughs> and if you fire once every 20 seconds can you keep this thing up permanently stacked Wow and I'm kind of curious if the 10% damage, if that's a Category 1 or Category 2 buff. Um, the number crunchers will, will figure that out. We should find out pretty soon. 
Either way, though, just that crit severity. Man, that is going to be amazing. Now, will that actually make it worth slotting a torpedo? That is the question. I actually like using a torpedo. I actually did a, a run a while ago with the scimitar with the crystalline entity torpedo on here, and I do actually really like this torpedo. This trait, if it turns out to be very good as far as the actual testing and parsing goes, this could be really, really worth it. It would make it actually worth slotting a torpedo and not be a DPS loss. Really great so far. Okay, let's take a look at the bridge officer stations. Now, right away you can see there's a big uh, upgrade over the normal scimitar because you get a Lieutenant Commander Universal Command. Now, this is already awesome because this, this adds a ton of flexibility to the scimitar right off the bat. Lieutenant Commander Universal means you could put a... Um, well, actually, I think it did have a... Did the old scimitar have a Lieutenant Commander Engineering? I'll have to double check that one. But here you could put Emergency Power to Weapons 3 if you want, or if you want to slot an Engineer, you could do that. Or you could, if you want to slot a Science, you could put a Gravity Well, or a... Uh, um, yeah, put a Gravity Well in there. You could put uh, all kinds of, you know, Tier 3, like Titan's Rift 3, or I'm trying to think what else you... Uh, feedback pulse you could put in there and on top of this it also gives you a regular U lieutenant universal and then it comes with your course commander tactical and you've got your lieutenant engineering and lieutenant science this is a really good bridge officer layout now I know a lot of people were hoping or expecting this to be an intel instead of a command station and that is somewhat of a letdown i think that's the only letdown i've i've seen with these flagships uh which are almost universally a solid upgrade it's that they didn't come with an intel which is unfortunate i'll admit i do like intel for the override subsystem safeties but um even without the intel these are enough of an upgrade over the tier uh you know the tier five normal scimitar or you know, the normal flagships, that uh, it's, I think, still worth the upgrade for sure. Especially if that trait is as good as it sounds. So there's the bridge officer layout and the masteries. What I'm going to do is, uh, now that you've had a chance to see the visuals in space, I'm going to head over to Earth Space Dock. We're going to dock up, head over to the tailor, and take a look at some of the customization options. And then we'll take a look at the Admiralty cards. And then I will move over to some of the other factions and take a look at those ships. All of the ships from all three factions are really look fantastic. This ship bundle is... is Yeah, it just it's pretty amazing to have a nine-ship bundle and almost all nine of the ships look visually amazing and they all each kind of have their own niche to fill even the even the engineering version uh, variant has some pretty decent uh, uh, flexibility to it all right so let's head over to the ship tailor here now i don't know why but for some reason when i go here it defaults back to the regular scimitar which i do own but the uh you can select uh oops there's the um, it does come with a scimitar bridge, so that's cool. Um, but you can see here you can select the different sort of base models. So here we go. The Flambard, this is the uh, Tier 6 tactical variant. The Kopesh, I believe, is the science variant. And then this, the uh, Shamshir. The Shamshir? This is the engineering variant. Let me just quickly go through them all again. Tactical variant, this is what I was showing in space. Science variant. Oh no, wait a minute. Do I have that backwards? 
I do. This is this is actually the science variant. Sorry about that. The Kopesh is the tactical variant. It has kind of these two claws coming out of the front here. The science and tactical look quite similar with just some subtle differences. I actually do like the the nacelle look here on the on the uh, science variant. That's kind of cool. The wings on the science variant have a lot more of the, I guess, sort of pointy bits, the claws coming out here. But just fantastic looking, all of them. And let's take a little bit more of a look at the engineering variant. This one kind of has more of a more smooth design, not quite as many pointy areas, but it is also... Um, the wings are, are much wider, are much thicker. Almost looks kind of bat-like. I, I do actually like the... See, if you compare it to the other one, the wings are much thicker. I do actually like that. And the one of the nice things about getting the bundle is that you can mix and match the parts over here. You can... Uh, you know, you can choose, you can even mix and match with the original, um, the original tier five scimitars. So you can see here, you can mix and match. I only own the original scimitar. I don't have the falchion or the talwar, but you can mix and match with those as well. Let's see, you look at the wings here. You can mix and match with all the wings. You can put the old scimitar wings on the new design. <laughs> Uh, I don't know that I'd say that matches too well. It doesn't look too bad, actually. But that is the nice thing about getting the bundle is you can mix and match all the different parts. Let's do um, let's do some randomizes here. Wow, you can have all kind. Of, ooh, that's nice. You can have all kinds of crazy stuff. I do have the Iconian shield on here, which is why you're seeing those parts. Maybe I should, let me just cancel out of here. Let me uh, go ahead and disable the Iconian visuals for now, just so we can see the actual base ship. Oops, not shuttle, starship. But yeah, let's take a look at the materials as well. You can use the, um, the materials from the tier five versions as well. So there's the falchion material. You've got your two Riemann materials, the standard Romulan ones. I like the Romulan brown variant with the Iconian visuals. They go pretty well. You've got your veteran. If you are a, uh, have a lifetime or veteran status, you get that skin. A little bit too light for my, for my taste, but you can put the original scimitar skin on there. That is pretty cool looking. It's got that kind of midnight blue look to it. Definitely some options you could do there. You can use the Talwar, and then if you've ever Tier 5 upgraded a ship, then you can also have access to the upgrade skin, which is also quite nice. I do like the Romulan upgrade skin. Do a few more randomizes. That's pretty nice. Now there is the original scimitar with the new wings. That actually doesn't look too bad. I don't like it the other way around as much. I don't like the old wings with the new, uh, the new frame, but I do like the new frame with the or the old frame with the new wings, that does look nice. This one more looks more like a heavy tank type look to it. But very nice. Oh man, I can't wait to check out the other two factions here. All right, so I can't take too much time here, but uh, hopefully you get an idea of some of the different variations you can get in the Romulan side of things. Ooh, that one's pretty sweet looking too. Man, these are so good looking. 
man, cryptic. Kudos on this one. These the visuals alone are almost <laughs> almost make me want to get this. Or well, I did get it, but almost. I mean, we're almost enough to sell it for me. Just the visuals. All right, but before I switch over, I do want to take a look at the Admiralty cards. I did want to. Uh, whoops, not that. Where's my duty officers? Thank you. All right, so let's go to Admiralty and let's take a look at my ship roster and we we'll probably scroll all the way down here and see if we can find. Okay, where are you? Okay, Shamshir. Okay, so let's take the Shamshir. This is the engineering one. So it gets plus 10 engineering per tax ship. And it's 44, 48, 25. Kind of actually more... I'm surprised. That's actually a lot of engineering. I was expecting more tactical. This is a pretty nice uh, balance between engineering and tactical, though. I like that. It reminds me of, like, the... Um, like the... Uh, Kind of like that. I guess not the Mogai. A Mogai is pretty balanced too, but that is more tactical. This reminds me more of something like a, like the um, Arbiter type, where it has a lot of engineering and tack. And 25 science is not bad too. And that's a great trait. Plus 10 engineering per tack ship. That will really help. Let's take a look at the Kopesh. This is the tactical one. So plus 10 tack per size ship. Interesting. That's interesting. This one is very, very much more tactical oriented. Very so, 60 tac, 30, and 27 psi. So not bad on the psi. And then the flambard. This is the science one. So you get plus 10 science per engineering ship, and 45 science. Very good. So this is actually a pretty solid um, science ship for. Well, I mean, it counts as a tactical ship. It has a lot of science uh, value to it, or a stat value on it. So 45 science, even more than tactical. That kind of, kind of a surprise. And then plus 10 science per engineering ship is a good trait. Very good trait. This will definitely help you out on the Romulan side for filling out all of those high science requirement missions. And I'm just remembering now, I did also want to take a look at the um, console. Now the consoles, I believe, are the same across all three factions. So I won't have to go through it for each faction here, but um, so that each variant, the tactical, science, and engineering variant of each faction comes with the same console. So here is the tactical console. So it has a passive bonus of 17.8 directed energy damage. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, yeah, that's actually not bad at all. I mean, that's pretty good. That's, uh, you know, if that's, that's all, I'm assuming it's a category one. I would, I would guess, but still pretty solid. Not quite as high as, like, you know, another tactical console, but still not bad. And then the active is uh, plus team fire cycle rate, plus turn, and plus flight speed. Prevents the target from being affected by fleet weapon acceleration for 60 seconds. So it gives it to you the buff for 15 seconds, but then it puts it makes so you can't benefit from the buff again for another 60 seconds. Mm, about one quarter uptime, 33% cycle haste. That's not bad at all. I mean, this the fact that it is a group buff may actually make this worth it. I'm kind of curious to see how this parses out because that uh, being able to provide that firing cycle haste to everyone. Plus a lot of turn speed and flight speed. That's not bad. It's only 15 seconds is a little bit on the short side, but it also has the passive directed energy bonus, so... Hmm. Not too bad. Not too bad of a console. Now I do have the other two ones here. Let's take a look at those. Here is the engineering one. This one comes with a universal console, adaptive energy systems, or sorry, emergency systems. So passive bonuses are 17.8, all energy damage resistance rating and 3.3% max haul. So decent-ish. Certainly good for tanking. Um, let's see what it comes with here for its active ability. Plus 50 all damage bonus resistance rating for 30 seconds. Whoa, 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 wait a second here. Effect is increased if health is equal to or less than 50%. 
plus 30% all damage for 30 seconds. Effect is increased by to 45% if health is equal to or less than 50. Interesting. 50% all energy damage for 30 seconds? That's actually really good. Because when he says all damage like that, that makes me think it's all like a cat 2. That's usually when it says all damage like that, it's usually cat 2. Not always, but... Man, if I combine that with the invincible trait, pop that when you're when you're down to you know below fifty percent, pop this and then pop your GDF. Wow, you'd be <laughs> you'd be buffed into the stratosphere for a time time period there. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Not bad. That, that's a, not a bad console. I definitely want to test that one out. And finally, let's take a look at the science console here. So what have we got here? 15% maximum shield capacity. Okay, so passive shield capacity buff. Eh, not the greatest thing in the world, but, you know, not bad, I guess. What this comes with is violent dampening wave for the active. 4 kilometer point blank AoE radiation dot damage debuff and disable so full 760 radiation damage for 15 seconds full minus 80 percent all energy damage for 15 seconds and full disable for five seconds four kilometer radius is not horrible i guess there could be especially if you slot this with like a gravity well go in there grab Bunch them all up, fly in there, and point blank disable them all for five seconds. That has potential. This would be more like a niche thing, like if you're going for a science disable type build, or a drain type build, and you want some disables in there. I could see this being a good console for that. And let's take a look at the numbers on the bonuses as well. So let me get info on these, because these... If you get all three of these, there is a set bonus associated. You can slot these all on your single ship. So let's take a look at the set bonuses. So we got a set two bonus, 2% 2 crit chance, three flight turn rate. Eh, I mean, okay. Uh, deadly response. When receiving damage while a shield facing is depleted, 10% chance to apply deadly response stacks up to three times. Self, 2,500 temporary hit points for 10 seconds. Self 10% all damage for 10 seconds. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stacks three times when a shield facing is depleted. Wow, you could take this into a Borg. They're going to drain your shield immediately, and you would probably stack this up like instantly. Especially if you go for like an aggro tank build. This could be really good for that. And then the fourth set, you actually need to get, for this set bonus, you actually need to get the three. Uh, flagships for your faction, and then you also need to get the Krenum Science Vessel. That's part of the 6th anniversary event. It's going on right now, and uh, you get that the console off there to actually make the 4-piece. But the 4-piece set is Self, Flagship, Starship, Console. Okay, so basically it increases all of your console powers. So the required maximum health is increased from 50 to 75. Mm, could be decent. I mean, that's okay. I mean... If you have like if you're running like invincible, you're gonna to want to be below 50% anyway when you get your GDF, and you can activate it. Not quite sure how great that is. Fleet weapon acceleration increases duration from 15 to 20. Okay, so it goes up to you know up to a max of a 30% or a one third 33% uh, uptime instead of 25% uh, uptime. And violent dampening wave increase the radius from four to five. That's pretty good too. But just keep in mind, you got to sacrifice four consoles to get this. I don't know that that's super worth it. I'm kind of curious how this deadly response goes, though. For tanking, with the temporary hit points and all damage for aggro tanking, that could be actually quite good. It might actually be worth getting the three console bonus there. All right, so that is the Romulan faction summary. Let's head over to my other characters. And take a look at the other factions. So let's see, which one do you want to do next? You want to do the 
Federation, take a look at the new Odysseys, or take a look at the Klingon Bordeskew as well. Let's just do the Federation, huh? Let's check out the new Odysseys and what their features and traits and everything are. As you can see, here I am. This is actually the science. Let's get rid of the UI for a minute here. This is actually the science variant of the new Tier 6 Odyssey. It actually looks very, very similar to the original Odyssey. Out of all the three variants, this one does look the closest. I think one of the main differences here is that the nacelles are a little bit forward swept as opposed to the other, the older Odyssey, which were kind of back swept. But otherwise, actually really, really quite similar. But just a still fantastic looking ship. I do have the Iconian visuals on here. But I just want to zoom around here so you can get a look, good look from all angles. Let's uh, get it in motion here. Very cool impulse engines. I love the impulse engine placement on the Odyssey and on this ship. I don't actually own any of the original Odysseys, so I've never really taken a close look at the ship before. But I really love it. I've always loved the Odyssey design. It's very sleek looking. I, I do like the double neck design with the kind of the hole in the middle. It looks really cool. It looks very sleek. And no complaints here. I, just a really fantastic looking ship. And these ships are all actually very large. <laughs> you When you... Uh, when you take a look out in, you know, when you're outside space dock and you see all the other ships in comparison, these ships are actually quite large. Scale-wise. And I don't know if they're quite Jupiter large, but they are still quite large. Alright, so let's take a look at the, the masteries and the layout of this ship. So this is more the traditional cruiser, because it actually is a 4-4 weapons layout. And in this case, I'm in the science variant, which comes with the four engineering consoles, or sorry, five engineering consoles, four science, and two tactical. This layout really lends itself to a tanking build. The original Science Odyssey was considered one of the best uh, aggro tanking ships in the game, and this one I'm sure will continue that tradition. And we'll even improve upon it because it has a, a much improved bridge officer layout. Let's take a look at the masteries here. So absorptive hull plating, so 25-25 damage resistance ratings. You've got your rapid repairs with so some health regen. You've got your enhanced hull plating, so resistances. Definitely looks more like cruiser, not like the Romulans, which are much more tactical oriented and then 10% hull hit points. And we will take a look at the... this. So this is the science uh, trait that you get. Um, yeah, starship trait that you get. So this one's called Checkmate. Exotic damage and projectile damage enhanced by control bridge officer abilities. So 30% projectile and 30% exotic damage for 15 seconds. That's really good. If you can keep that up just by using control bridge officer abilities, which I believe Gravity Well does count. I'll have to double check that, but I believe Gravity Well does count as a control ability. You need that and probably one other ability. You could almost keep this up perma and go for a nice exotic damage or a torpedo build for that projectile. Man, that's so good. Real, real potential there. Okay, I'm going to fly over again to the turn rate is not as bad. They did enhance the turn rate and the inertia for these ships, for the Odyssey, the Tier 6 Odyssey over the original Odyssey, which is pretty nice. Still, you know, still a cruiser, still pretty slow turning, but not quite as bad as the Odyssey, the original Odysseys. A little bit better. 
So let's head back to Earth Space Dock and let's see if I can find some other ships here just so you can see. Like, okay, here we go. Here's a uh, Excelsior. I mean, you can see. <laughs> This ship is way bigger than an Excelsior. Let's see how big it is compared to the Temple of Dreadnoughts. That's a very big ship, too. This guy doesn't mind me parking next to him. So it's not quite it. Well, it's about as long as the Temporal Dreadnought, but not as bulky, that's for sure. Not as much mass. So, but that's a good reference scale there. Oh, there's a uh, another scimitar over there. All right. Let's go ahead and dock, and we'll check this thing out in the tailor. And let's see, what did I miss? I went over those. Ah, uh, yes. Let's take a look at the bridge officer stations. Now, I'm actually, I don't know offhand what the original Odyssey had, but I do know this ship is a, quite a bit more flexible thanks to its universal seating over here. So let's take a look. This one also comes with the Lieutenant Commander Universal uh, slash command. So that's here. Now it also comes with an Ensign Universal. Comes with a Lieutenant Tactical, Commander Engineering, all the Federation ones come with Commander Engineering. They are considered cruisers. And a Lieutenant Commander Science. Man, if you made this Universal one a Science, you could you could really go with a heavy exotic damage build on this. You could have two Lieutenant Commander Sciences. That would be pretty sweet. You could put a uh, feedback pulse on there for your aggro tanking. You could stick a gravity well in there. All kinds of cool stuff you can do. Or you could make it a little more tactical oriented. You could make the Universal a tactical. And you could have, you know, five tactical slots. If you made the Ensign also a tactical, you could actually have three tactical bridge officers and six total tactical slots. That is a lot of tactical for a cruiser. So definitely some good options there. The Commander Engineering is good, especially for tanking. You could put an Ox to Sif 3 in there. Um, Emergency Power to Weapons 3. Maybe like a reverse shield polarity or something. Oh, I, I can't wait to test out. I'm actually working on an aggro tank build, so... Um, for this ship, I will definitely be testing out that kind of a build and do a video on that. So that is the bridge officer layout. Let's go ahead and play around in the tailor a little bit. And like I said, I don't need to show all the consoles again, but you can see the consoles are the same across all of them. All of them. For this one, you have the dampening wave emitter. For the engineering one, you've got your... Um, the, the Hall 1, the Adaptive Emergency Systems. And then for the Tactical 1, you've got your uh, your team fire cycling buff, so the flagship tactical computer. So those are all the same across all three. Let's take a look at the ship tailor. And, oh yeah, before I forget, let me turn off the Iconian visuals. Whoops, there we go. Just so we get a look at the base ship. Oh okay, darn it, I keep going to the shuttle. Let's go back to the starship here. All right, so here we go. So I chose kind of color scheme that best fit with the Iconian shield, which is kind of a red color, but uh, let's take a look at all the options we get here. And I believe for interior, so yeah, it comes with the, yeah, I didn't buy the Odyssey, so it does come with the Odyssey, uh, Bridge. Aquarius. Did it also come with that? Okay. But it does come with the bridge, even though I never had the original Odyssey. Um, and I believe... Okay, so yeah, you can use the original Odyssey skin on it. There's the Endeavor. This is the tactical variant. A little bit more... I'm trying to think of what this one is. What does this remind me of? Because it's a very angular uh, saucer section. Pretty sleek. It almost kind of reminds me of like an, well, not really an Avenger, I guess. This looks like an Avenger. 
how the how the neck has this long uh, extension that almost goes down to the rear of the secondary hull. That reminds me a lot of an Avenger. But this angular, I mean, this almost reminds me more of like a Prometheus. I mean, it's a very angular pointed uh, saucer. It does have the double neck and almost a little bit more elevated than the uh, science variant and the original Odyssey. Pretty cool looking deflector though, I like it. Also has the forward swept uh, pylons. Very sleek looking nacelles. So very nice, that is a tactical variant. And there's the original Odyssey just for reference. Still a very nice looking ship. The Yorktown, this is the science. Let me just, I'm gonna quickly switch back and forth here. So let's see what the differences are. You can see it is very, very similar, but actually not quite as long. And you can see definitely the pylons are forward swept instead of rear swept. The nacelles are a little bit more squared off in the front. The saucer, saucers are very, very similar, except this one, it looks like the, uh, um, Impulse engines kind of extend out more as opposed to the these. Interesting. But still very similar. So let's take a look at the Sojourner. Now this one, you could tell right away. <laughs> this looks like an ambassador. No doubt about that. Those nacelles are almost a dead ringer for the ambassador. It's like they took the ambassador and just slapped the double neck on it. It's even got the very circular uh, deflector. So if you want the more traditional looking, the more traditional looking, like the, I mean, even it kind of looks like a galaxy even. Or even like the Andromeda, the newer Andromeda. But this is the more traditional looking one, which is very cool. So if you like the more circular, See, this is perfect. They really, I really like what Cryptic did here. They gave you a lot of options, and you can mix and match the, the saucers that you like. Like, if you like the more traditional circular saucer, you could go with that. If you like the sleeker one, you can go with the, you know, the Yorktown. Or if you like a more angular one, you can go with this. That's, that's perfect. You've got your three different kind of nacelles. You've got different, I mean, you can really mix and match and tailor the ship to how you want it. And as you can see here, you can select, okay, you, I didn't buy the Odyssey, but it looks like you can use the Odyssey here for no charge. That's nice. Let's take a look at the materials. It looks like it just has your standard seven materials. Type seven is always a great material, very cool looking. Get your upgrade skin. Not bad. And your veteran skin. there. Not a huge fan of the veteran skin on Federation. A little bit too bright blue, I guess. But still not bad. Let's do some randomizes here and see what the, we come up with. That's a good angle to get this at. Let's do it like, I guess like, so we can see a little bit of the underside. Interesting, interesting. Oh, there's the, yeah, there's the, amba the ambassador nacelles with the tactical saucer. That's actually not bad looking. I, I kind of like that. Oh, and there's, the, yeah, I, I do like the circular saucer too. That's very galaxy looking. Man, so many cool combinations you could do with this. So good. Here you can combine the more sleek nacelles with the more circular. Very nice job. Uh, man, this is really impressive. Oh, 
All right. Let's finish up here with the Federation faction with and take a look at the uh, Admiralty cards. Man, I mean, so far, we, we reviewed the Romulan and Federation, and all six of the ships so far just look fantastic and really mix and match well together. All right, so where are the Odysseys? Let's take a look here. There's the Operation Star Cruiser, Science Star Cruiser, and Tactical Star Cruiser. Okay, so let's take a look here. What do we got? Okay, so this is a tactical one, but still heavy on the engineering stat-wise. So 56, 36, 25, and plus 10 tack per psi ship. I believe that was the same. It looks like it has the same bonus as the tactical variant on the Romulan side. But the stats are different. Much more focus on the engineering. Same here for the science variant. Very heavy on science. And pretty good on, or sorry, very heavy on engineering, but pretty good on the science too. And you get plus 10 side per end ship, so good. And you can see here these actually all do count as cruisers because they are engineering ships. Unlike the on the warbird on the Romulan side, they're warbirds, so they count as tactical. And then the operations version. 65 engineering, 26, 26. So you actually see I have a command battle cruiser right here above it. Not quite as fully into the engineering as the command battle cruisers, which all have like 70 plus engineering. But then again, it has a more balanced into the tactical and science, which is good. Sometimes you need that when you're trying to fill something out. It's better to have kind of a, a spread instead of all focused into one stat. Alrighty, so there are the Admiralty cards for Federation. Let's wrap this up by taking a look at the Klingons. So the Klingons got their tier six Bortiskews. So let's log in and take a look at these. I was also very impressed with the visuals on these. Very nice update to the original Bortiskew. And here I am, I believe, is this the tactical? Yes, so I'm in the Martok. This is the tactical variant. Let's get rid of the UI and take a look up close. Very long ship. And the, the actual, the, the thickness of the neck here is very thick. So it is kind of reminiscent of the Borsku. Kind of almost a retro looking nacelle here, very circular. And the wings, for sure, look like they're from uh, Nagvar. Very Nagvar-esque uh, wings there. But yeah, this thing definitely looks like a battle cruiser. No doubt about that. Very, very cool looking. Let's uh, get this thing up to speed here. Take a look. Because so there's the impulse. Impulse engines. Now, am I crazy, or does this thing... What is this in the front here? That almost looks like a spinal lance. Am I, am I going crazy here? Look at that. That looks like it has like four spinal cannons. That's pretty sweet. That'd be awesome if you could stick like the uh, the spinal cannon from the uh, Mata Raptor onto this thing. That would be awesome. But unfortunately, I don't think you can. But I kind of am curious why they put what almost looks like a spinal cannon on this sucker. But there you go, everyone. That is a look at the new Bordeskew. This is the tactical version. Let's take a look at the layout. Let's get the UI back up here. All right, so what do we got for the layout? And let's take, let's take a look at the masteries here first. So these are counting as battle cruisers. And one thing I noticed about these ships is they are lacking the attract fire command. Um, I've seen quite a few comments about this on Reddit. People are complaining that, you know, these are excellent tanking ships and they really do deserve to have a command attract fire on them. I I actually somewhat agree with that. Yeah, you can call, say these are battle cruisers, but I mean, these are tanking ships. You can use these to tank. And I do think it would be worthy to have 
the uh, the full command you know the full command uh, array on here all four they, they do, these don't have a hangar bay like the command battle cruisers it's not like they have some other advantage these these are pretty much cruisers so I, I think they would a uh, benefit of having the full array of cruiser commands so there's one downside of these but uh, they did get a nicely buffed hull and turn rate over the other Borta, uh, the old Bortas, uh, Bortascu, and that is definitely a big advantage. That was a, a, a definite uh, downside to the original Tier 5 Bortascu. You can actually see the turn rate's not too bad. I mean, yeah, it's a cruiser, it's big, but uh, this is not, not too bad of a turn rate. It's workable. And yeah, you can put uh, basic maneuvers on there. You can swing around really pretty fast. All right, so again, back to the masteries here. Okay, so it's got the absorptive hull plating, just like a cruiser. This is a little different, though. It does have enhanced weapon banks. So this is more on the battle cruiser side, so we get the... 15% crit severity. That's pretty good. What else we got? The energy weapon resistance rating. So yeah, that's like the cruiser. And then you've got your armored hull, hull hit points. So just li pretty much very similar to the cruiser. The only difference here is instead of the hull regen, you get the crit severity, which actually is nice. That's a much better mastery in my opinion. Um, this is a tactical version, so it does come with a supercharged weapons trait, just like the uh, just like the scimitar, tier six scimitar. So. Actually, I haven't checked out the trait on the uh, engineering version. I'll, I'll make sure to do that once I uh, beam down to the surface and take a look. But you can see it is a 4-4 weapons layout, traditional for cruiser, and very traditional 4-2... Oh, wait a second. Yeah, 5. I'm actually... This is... Someone correct me if I'm wrong here, but is this one of the only cruisers that has 5 tactical consoles? Am I going crazy there? I'm trying to remember, does the Moog have five? Or is it only four? That's the only other cruiser I could think of that would even have five, but I think that only has four. I think this might be like the only like faction cruiser with five tactical. I'll, have to, I'll double check that, but that's what I'm thinking. Unless I'm forgetting something. Someone please let me know in the comments below if, uh, if I'm not remembering properly. Let's take a look at the bridge officer layout here. Like all of the, uh, like all of these flagships, it does have the universal uh, lieutenant commander universal command and an ensign universal here. And then it has Lieutenant Commander Tactical, okay. And then, it, so this is much more similar to the, uh, the Federation flagships, where it has the Commander Engineering. And then you've got your Lieutenant Science. Interesting, interesting. But definitely you could load this up with Tactical if you wanted to. You could put a Tactical Officer here, Tactical Officer here, and that we could make the Ensign Universal a tactical if you want to. And honestly, you could probably get away with that on this ship because, uh, I mean, why you only gonna need two science for a uh, tactical ship. And this is plenty of engineering slots for a tactical ship. I mean, not for a tanking build, but if you're just going for an all-out damage build, you could you could put seven tactical slots on here if you want. That'd be plenty of room for you know if you wanted to run a torpedo and beams or and you wanted to run uh you could even put a command like concentrate firepower in there or um lots of options all right let's head down and actually let's head up to the shipyard and take a look at the ship tailor here, see what the different visuals are. And also, before I forget, first thing, I want to actually make sure I go over the engineering variant 
starship trait that you can unlock. So let's do that right away here before I forget. Let's take a look at the engineering. Okay, here's the engineering variant. Let's take a look at the starship trait. Plus max HP to self when using hull heal or command buff ability. Plus HP to plus max HP self plus three percent max hull hit points. Does that stack? Adaptive hull plating. It doesn't have like a duration. I'm I'm confused about this. Plus 3% max hull hit points when using hull heal or command buff. Hmm, I'm, I have to say I'm confused on this. I don't know if this is like a buff with a duration. I don't know if it stacks. Uh, do you just use one hull heal and then for the rest of the mission you've got 3% max hull hit points? That's just very odd. Not quite as impressive as the other two, for sure. That's the science and the tactical, but... I mean, for tanking, you might want to run it, but uh, you're probably going to be tight on tr starship traits. So, mm, not super impressed by that one. All right, let's head over to the tailor and take a look. All right, so like I said, this is the tactical, oops, and just like previously, I will turn off the Iconian visuals here. All right, there we go. So this is the tactical variant, and definitely has a very Nagvar-inspired look to it, but, but with a heavier neck, very thick neck area all right and it does look like it did unlock the original bortas so here's the original bortas still a pretty cool looking ship i mean you could uh mix and match with this for some pretty interesting uh variations So here's the Kales. This is the engineering variant. And this has kind of the forward swept down pointing wings, which it reminds me of more of a Moog. Or the new uh, Karak Battlecruiser. Very, very thick looking neck on this one. More Definitely more of a tankish look to it. Pretty cool uh, deflector. I like this kind of, I don't know if this is like a secondary bridge or something here in the middle. It's interesting. But the Bortas didn't have that, and the, uh, the Martok doesn't. And this is the science variant. This is the Gorkhan. Also a very cool, oh, it's a triple nacelle. Interesting. I thought it was a double nacelle from the pr promo images. But it's actually like a triple nacelle. I'm not quite sure... I'm trying to think of the what this is inspired by. I mean, it actually has a very unique look to it. I'm not sure of what I would say this is inspired by. It's not a Vorcha, I don't think. It doesn't have the down tilt on the nacelles. Definitely a very interesting look to it. But it looks like only the Martok. The Martok is the one that actually still looks like it has that spinal cannon. All of them have a very retro looking, except for this one. This one has the three smaller nacelles, but both the uh, tactical and the engineering one have a very retro looking, very circular, cylinder shaped uh, nacelles. All right, let's quickly go through the skins. 
Actually, is that... Where's the upgrade skin? Looks like it might be missing a couple skins here. Kind of surprised, but it's got... Four skins, and then the veteran. I don't see upgrade. That's very odd. Yeah. All right, let's do some randomizes here, see what it can come up with. That is the original nacelles there. Interesting, interesting. That's like the original Bortos with the newer nacelles. Uh, it actually looks very similar. Well, this is a different uh, saucer. So there you go. There is some randomized, random uh, mix and matching of the different Klingon versions. Now we got. Uh, I do like the newer nacelles. I was never a huge fan of the original Bordeskew nacelles. Kind of an odd shape to them. I do like the retro look. The triple nacelle look is kind of cool. But I do like I like these this retro big huge nacelle look. I like that a lot. All right, so let's finish this up with a look at the Admiralty cards for the Klingon side. All right, so let's see. Okay, here's the science. And the Martok. Okay, so we'll start off with the science variant here. So this is very odd to me, and I noticed this when I was looking through the stats as well. The science version of the on the Klingon faction is very odd. It only has three science consoles. Look at this. The science one has a 434 layout. That doesn't make any sense. Why would it have more engineering than science? Or why would it have more tactical than science? It seems like it would be a 443 might make more sense. Just very odd for the science version of the ship to have the fewest science consoles? That's just odd. I know in general, Klingon ships in general have fewer science, but it still just seems odd. Oh, and that reminds me, one thing about the science cruisers, the, the, the Klingon and the Federation science variants do come with sensor analysis, but they do not have a secondary deflector. But they do have... Uh, sensor analysis, which is a cool, nice little bonus. They almost kind of get that for free. They don't really lose anything in any other area to get that sensor analysis, and that's a very, very good debuff. You know, usually only science, pure science ships get that. So wait, let me go back to the Admiralty here. Yeah, so I just wanted to make that note about the science version before I forgot. So let's just finish up here and take a look at the other variants. So we looked at the science. But the reason why I was making that comment is because it only has 27 science for an actual science variant. That's a lot less than the, you know, the Odyssey variant and even less than like the, the Romulan one. So a little bit disappointing, but you still could get the nice uh, ability for the plus 10 psi per eng ship. And that's very nice. The KLS is the engineering version, so it gets plus 10 engineering per tack ship, very much focused on the engineering, but also a pretty good amount of tactical, and pretty low on the science. And then the Martok, which is the tactile variant, it gets plus 10 tack per science ship. I don't have a ton of actual true science ships on my Klingon side, but... Uh, it does come with a nice balance between engineering and tactical. 48, 46, and 23 is not horrible for science either. Oh, 
All right, everyone, so... Actually, let me double check. If I believe this also comes with a... Interior, the Bortescu interior. Yes, it does. Okay, good. So it does come with the bridge. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. <laughs> All right, so I think that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to show. I just wanted to give kind of, you know, just a general overview of all the ships. Like I said, in the future I will be doing a, you know, more detailed builds. Um, in particular on the Science Odyssey, I will definitely be taking a look at that. Probably the tactical version here for the Klingon, and then for the Romulan I'm debating between either the uh, tactical version or the Science version there as well. Definitely do an in-depth build video there. So you can look forward to that, but Man, what can I say? Visually, these ships are all very impressive. The Bortas and the Odysseys both got nice stat boosts over the original Tier 5. The Scimitars didn't get as much of a stat boost, but they uh, still did get the extra bridge officer station and more flexibility in their bridge officers. The bridge officer layouts on all of these ships is very good. They almost they all have the two universal. They have the lieutenant commander universal command, and then either an ensign or a lieutenant universal. So very very flexible. All around very solid upgrades. I, I want to check out all these traits. The, the the tactical and engineering traits look very good. Even some of the consoles look like they might be decent. You know, consoles for these ships are usually pretty gimmicky, so I, I'll want to test it out first. But even the consoles look like they have some potential especially in teams. They seem to be very team-oriented. I mean, we can all be a little bit disappointed that these are command instead of uh, intel seating. I mean, it, it would have been nice. You could almost argue it would have been almost a little bit overpowered in the case of the scimitar to put intel on there. But even without the intel, just, just flat-up upgrades, even if you don't even use any of those command seats, it's still a solid upgrade over the Tier 5 particularly in the bridge officer layouts and the flexibility you get there. The new trades also look quite good. The new consoles have some promise. So all around a very solid, solid pack. So very much thanks to Cryptic. Very good work on this. Visually, all nine ships look great. The mix and matching options are fantastic. You've got uh, and you know the layouts, the traits, just everything top to bottom. This is a really, really looks like it's going to be a really good, uh, good starship pack. All right, everyone. Hopefully, this gave you enough of an overview, and hopefully, you can kind of get an idea if you're interested in any of these variants, what would be good for you. And uh, and yeah, I will leave it off there. Look forward to some more build videos in the future. Those will be coming soon. And also, I'll be finishing up the Krenum Science Vessel from the sixth anniversary event. And uh, we'll be doing a build video on that as well. So lots of videos to come. And, uh, yeah, so I will be seeing you later. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Bye for now.